Hello everyone, this is Dr. Clark in the Center for Weight Loss Success and today on Losing Weight USA we're going to talk a little bit about body composition as well as your metabolism. Um, we're going to go through kind of the printout that we have here at the office, the body composition printout and go through what are the important numbers, what do they mean, um, how can you utilize these things to help you and really hopefully answer any questions about that. Body composition is very important because it's our, and it's especially important to know your lean body mass because you want to preserve that lean body mass. It's our lean body mass that really drives our overall metabolism. You want to keep your metabolism as good as possible while you're losing weight. Literally, as you age, you want to keep metabolism as good as possible, which then makes it easier to stay healthy, easier to keep weight off. All right, here's the official welcome. Welcome to Losing Weight USA, real-time answers to your weight loss questions, as well as a little bit of expert advice. Gives you answers not only to uh, some of whatever it is we're talking about today, but also some of the latest research going on. A little bit of expert advice gives you direct access not only to me, but you should be receiving the health tips and recipes. Um, they're through the membership portal. Each webinar will last oh, 30 minutes or so. If you have questions, type them in during the presentation into the chat box. If you think of things once we're all done, just give us a yell here at the Center for Weight Loss Success. The email is success at cfws.com. Phone number 757-873-1880. All right, well, let's flip the slides here. All right, very good. So, body composition you know if you've if you've come into the office and you were seen here if you've come into the office you've had your body composition done so you can step on the scale you grasp the little handles on each side and it produces this printout it gives us not only your weight but else a good estimate of what is your weight made of all important information to know and kind of the way the whole thing works, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before or not, I don't think so, but the way the whole thing works is that we, there actually is a tiny little current that actually is put through your, um, put through the handles, which subsequently then you transfer that current through your body to the other side, and subsequently that current, we can actually give a good estimation of what is the body made of. And part of the reason that works is because lean body mass as opposed to fatty tissue has different resistance to it and resistance is what's kind of holding up um the current that goes through there and so kind of if you think about it kind of things that have uh, that are kind of salt water type of thing which your body mainly is salt water will conduct energy very nicely or conduct a current very nicely Whereas fatty tissue is more like in the insulation around a wire. And subsequently then fatty tissue doesn't conduct it well at all. And so subsequently then you, it can sort out, the computer program can sort out can somewhat how much of the body is kind of lean body mass versus muscle mass versus water. Right. That's kind of the very basics of the whole thing. And it and, and it actually can give a good estimate estimation. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. There's a good one to two percent error rate in it. So literally if you got on and off the scale and did it a couple times, you'd probably get some variability in there. There are also, uh, I do also like people to understand that sometimes you'll get wacky numbers in this too. And part of that is, well, gee, whether well, it's a good contact where you grabbed hold of it, was there something on the actual handles? There's some reason it may not have given a good, accurate. Uh, but for most of the time, it actually can get a good estimation in there. Not perfect. And it really is getting an estimation more of kind of what's going across the top half of your body. Now, if you have a scale at home that can do body composition, often the, some of them now can actually um, work to give you what's your fat percentage. Okay. And the way that's working is it actually is running a, a little current from your feet all the way up through the bottom half of your body, back down to your feet. And subsequently, then that's how it figures. The concept is very similar. And it used to be that those um, scales are very inaccurate. 
but they've gotten technology has advanced and so over the last five to ten years they actually can be fairly accurate in there again you'll sometimes get some weird variability in there so i do encourage people don't take any one number as kind of the you know the absolute it's trying to take you kind of what's on average is going on over a period of time um, probably the scale part of it, how much you actually weigh, this should be pretty accurate. Okay? But the actual body composition, you may get some variability, and a lot of that has to do with what time of day you're doing, how hydrated you are. Um, typically, kind of a morning weight's different than an afternoon weight. Body composition changes like that as well. And so, kind of when you're doing this and getting comparisons, from one study to the next, it is important to kind of do it under similar circumstances. So that if you tend to get your weight, which I encourage people to do mainly in the early morning, because that's your most accurate weight, if you've got one of those scales that does the body composition, yeah, just do it routinely then in the morning. And then you may come into the, then uh, do the scale here, and one, the weight may be a little bit different because it's calibrated a little bit different, but you may find, hey, the com body composition is different. And there can be a number of reasons for that. One is at a different time of day, different hydration status will change because water is, is red as lean body mass because it's not fat. Because anything that's not fat is going to be red as lean body mass. So different times of day is going to matter. Plus, the ones that you may have at home are actually measuring the bottom half of your body. The one we have here at the office is actually doing the top half of your body. And so there are differences, obviously. And so you just to the fact that even if they're both really accurate, you'll still end up with kind of slightly different numbers looking at the body composition. So again, what we want to watch is trends more than anything else. All right, so back to the point at hand. So now we're talking about kind of the body composition printout that you get when you come here to the office. Run, step on the scale, grasp the, the, the handles on both sides, get your printout, kind of, okay, what do these numbers actually mean? Okay. So we can use some of these numbers then too to help with kind of figure out part of kind of the eating plan. And uh, when I'm talking to people about their eating plan, you may notice that, hey, I may pick up your body composition. What I'm looking at more than anything is kind of the lean body mass there. So their lean body mass gives us an idea of where to start with how much protein you need to kind of preserve that lean body mass. Okay, And we'll go through kind of the, my kind of the mental calibrations or calculations rather that can help figure out some of those things. Now, some numbers on this whole big sheet of paper are going to be more important than other numbers. What probably the most important number is really the thing you can measure at home. That's your weight. Okay, that's really the most important number. It's the most, uh, you know, it's the, the best monitor we have of health that can be done day to day, pretty much anywhere. Most people have a scale at home doesn't matter if your scale is absolutely perfect or not. What matters is, is it gives you consistent results. And it gives you consistent, you get now of a comparison. So it's the best monitor we have of overall health. Right? And so I encourage people to use it. And as I, I kind of digress here again, is that, you know, I encourage people to weigh themselves routinely. I think weighing yourself daily is a great idea. And the reason is not to just look down and go, oh, good or oh, bad. Just look. And the reason is to compare the previous 24 hours. You know, what over the previous 24 hours could affect the number today? And over time, you'll figure out the little things that matter. Okay? And it may be as simple as I had a little extra salt or I had you know, over the last 24 hours or I didn't poop that day or maybe time for your cycle or whatever it is. Okay. But you'll start figuring out those little things that matter. And often it may be, you know, I had a little extra fruit yesterday. And look, I'm retaining water now. Made your weight jump up. Or gee, I had a bad weekend and you know, may have had a couple extra alcohol drinks. Or I ate a bag of chips or whatever it was. And you'll figure out how does your body react. And once you know those things, 
then it's easier to do something about it. But if you don't keep track of kind of what's happened over the previous 24 hours, and it's hard to do that same thing over a week. It's hard to look back over a week. What did I do differently over this week as opposed to the previous week? So if you're just weighing yourself once a week, it's hard to do that. It's because, who knows, we all, we all think we did the same thing week to week. Well, you don't. And kind of, but it is easier to look back on 24 hours and go, okay, what about that 24 hours was different that can affect this number today? All right, so I'm going to quit beating on that, uh, that horse there. So again, but I do encourage people, weigh yourself routinely. It's a good idea. All right, so back to body composition. Again, most important number really is your weight. And then I encourage people, look at their lean body mass, which is read on this printout as fat-free mass. Fat-free mass and lean body mass are interchangeable terms. And fat-free mass, lean body mass, is made up mainly of muscle and water. Okay, and a lot of that may be salt water, different different minerals within that water, and then a few pounds of kind of other things, but they're typically extra minerals in there. And we think of like, gee, we got muscle mass, but you also have all that bone, right? Well, kind of the bone, even though it's still hard, bone actually has a lot of water in it as well. And so it really does, when you actually, if you were to melt it all down, so to speak, and how much was water, how much was kind of other things in there. There's only a very small amount of really other things between muscle and water. Right? So it actually works pretty well, even though obviously it's probably not perfect. Okay. All right, so we're going to go through kind of what this printout looks at. We'll look at the, bot the top third, kind of the middle, what's in that middle thing, and then at the bottom. Okay. And we'll kind of talk about the different the important things that are actually in there. All right. Advance, maybe. Here we go. All right. So looking at that top part of there. Now, the first number up there is your weight. Okay. Now, most of us in the U.S. think in pounds, not kilograms. And so kind of you can forget kind of watching the, you know, looking at the metric side of the whole thing that we typically don't think that way and while we grew up kind of looking at pounds not kilograms the rest of the world often looks at kilograms we don't so anyway you can ignore the kilogram side the metric side of the whole thing so obviously the first line is what's your weight okay, a very important number to know right underneath that is kind of what's your body fat and then underneath that is the fat free mass or lean body mass okay. The body fat, what I encourage people to think about more of the body fat is look at the percentage, not actually the number of pounds. Now, obviously, when you're losing weight, you want to lose pounds of lean body mass. But when we think about fat, we often think, and this is kind of built into our, our memory bank, so to speak, is that over time, we kind of think of the body fat as being a percentage. Okay? The fat-free mass, then we often think is how many pounds of fat-free mass or lean body mass you have, which kind of, okay, it's, that's a little bit different. And, you know, why is that? Well, again, the, the it, percentages can actually change somewhat without necessarily changing those pounds of something. Okay? As well as the opposite is also true, is that gee, the pounds of something can change, but the percentages may not change that much. So what I do encourage people is looking at body fat, you want to actually look at the percentage. When we look at the lean body mass or fat free mass, we actually want to look at how many pounds and you want to preserve that number as good as possible. So body fat, now one of the things with this, just the way this machine in the office is set up and actually many machines out there are set up, is they're typically set up for athletes. And, and think about them, uh, most of our patient population actually are true athletes and so there is some inherent differences then we actually have it we we've got it so we originally set it up okay it was set up we as for an athlete but we've had them change that adjust that so it tend to hit more of our patient population so what does that actually mean so if there is somebody who's really very good athlete, 
very low body fat percentage, when they come in and weigh on our scale and do their body composition, the numbers are going to be less accurate for them as opposed to our typical patient population. And it's because I don't see well-trained athletes here. So we had the scale adjusted somewhat. Not that the num not that the weight would be off, but that it's actually measuring the body composition a little bit differently. And so it's set a little bit differently so that we can have more accurate numbers for the typical patient that I see in the office, which is generally not your world-class athlete. Okay. So, so if someone, a world-class athlete does come and say, hey, I'd like to check my body composition, my response to them is, uh, yeah, you're welcome to check your body composition, but realize the accuracy may be off for you versus someone who is not the world-class athlete is the way we have it set, the scale in the office set, is that it actually tends to be more accurate for the non-world-class athlete, so to speak. All right. Below that fat-free mass, lean body mass, is the body. How much is body water? Now, on our newest scales, and I don't have it reflected in this printout here, is that it'll actually give you muscle mass versus body water. Okay. Again, those two things pretty much add up to the lean body mass, which is the more important number then is how much lean body mass you have. The body water percent gives you a decent idea of your hydration status. But still, kind of, it's not, um, uh, you don't necessarily need to separate out muscle mass from the water. And you have to think about it, muscle mass without water is jerky. And so, you know, how much, you know, we don't really measure it that way. It's like taking all your muscle and drying it out, then you have this much left. It's like, okay, we're talking about jerky there. Well, that's not how we live. Muscle mass and water go together. Okay. And so to separate them out completely doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's not a reason to really do that. Body mass index, which is kind of at the next level down, is kind of has nothing to do with body composition. It's just height and weight. Okay. Height and weight thrown into a mathematical equation, spits on a number, and there are kind of ranges of what body mass index is, quote, normal versus overweight versus obese versus morbidly obese. Okay. And so kind of that's all well and good, but really looking at overall health, body composition makes more sense than actually looking at body mass index. Body mass index is great for kind of a, a screening, a health screening for a population of people. It, body mass index doesn't work well on an individual because a person who is very muscular, may have a high body mass index, but they're actually fairly healthy. As opposed to someone who has a lower body mass index, but most of that mass is fatty tissue, may be much less healthy. So body mass index at any one individual doesn't work well as a screening test. As a population screen, it actually works pretty nicely. But again, when we're treating people, we're treating individuals, not populations. So there's a limit to really what to how helpful body mass index is in any one individual. Versus population works well, but for an individual doesn't work so well. Body composition tends to work better. All right. So going in the wrong direction here. All right. Now in the middle section, the middle section often will have this target weight thrown. And you may, if you come in here a number of times and weigh yourself, hey, I'm losing weight, I know scheme, my target weight keeps going down. And the reason that occurs is that target weight is based on how much lean body mass you have or fat-free mass you have. So if you're losing any lean body mass, that target weight's going down. Because what it does, it's just that the computer machine takes the fat-free mass, the lean body mass, whatever that number is, and then adds a healthy amount of fat to it. So if you're losing weight and you've lost some lean body mass, subsequently that target weight keeps lowering down. And so that's part of the reason why I encourage people that we want to look at kind of preserving that lean body mass, keep your metabolism high as possible, um, 
therefore kind of a, the more lean body mass you have the better off you are so if you're losing weight but losing a lot of lean body mass all you're really doing is slowing down your metabolism okay? now, that's kind of an oversimplification but it, there's a lot of truth to that oversimplification um you want to preserve that lean body mass keep your metabolism high as possible it's your muscle mass lean body mass that really drives your overall metabolism and i guess the simplified version of why that is well if muscle tissue burns a lot more calories in any 24 hours than fatty tissue does now it doesn't mean fatty tissue doesn't burn calories it does but it's not nearly as metabolically active as muscle tissue is and to take that a step further is that well-trained muscle tissue burns a lot more calories than what I'll say untrained muscle tissue. So kind of uh, even if you had a, an athlete that has as much lean body mass as the couch potato person, the athlete's metabolism is going to be much higher because the well-trained muscle is going to burn a lot more calories than the untrained muscle of the couch potato. Okay. So to, to just say muscle mass burns this many calories per hour isn't real. I mean, it does burn a certain number of calories per hour, but the better trained that muscle tissue is, the higher that number is going to be. And that's why very well-trained athletes, one, is they can, uh, their metabolism is much, much higher, and therefore they can eat many more calories. And you often get you know, world-class athletes, Michael Phelps being kind of one that we talked about in the, in the past, you know, he's not a world-trained class athlete probably anymore, but back in the day, um, Olympic swimmer, for those who all, but and back in the day, he was eating, you know, seven, 8,000 calories a day. And it's because he was burning seven or 8,000 calories a day. And he had very well-trained muscle. Now, when you're not training that hard, this often happens when, gee, when well-trained athletes, very, you know, even world-class athletes, once they start, they're done with their professional training, now they kind of do not quite so hard a training. They find, hey, these people are gaining weight. And when people retire from whatever, you know, professional baseball, professional football, professional whatever, okay, is that, gee, they may have, you know, they may not change their eating habits a whole lot. And so subsequently then, gee, is their body is not quite as well trained. All of a sudden they're eating still so many more calories, their weight all of a sudden starts going way up. You know, well-trained muscle burns a lot more calories than untrained muscle. Okay? It's kind of, if you stop using it, you will lose it. Okay? All right. So, again, I keep digressing here. So the target weight really is kind of is based on how much lean body mass you have and adds a healthy amount of fat to it. Kind of the water norms and that in there, they kind of give a hydration status. The body fat percentages, again, these machines originally are set up for athletes. Therefore, kind of that's what that's really looking at, the more of the truly the athletic thing. They don't have a different printout. So even though we may have changed the adjusted the actual scale on there, the printout is still the same based on that same uh, um, thing. So those norms kind of sit there and they don't change each printout, printout. Now the bottom section is for most people, especially for our patient population, I kind of well, you may want to ignore a lot. Because the bottom section is a try, it's the machine trying to estimate your basal metabolism. Okay? So the bottom section on that body composition analysis is trying to estimate your basal metabolism. Resting energy is the resting energy expenditure, REE, is kind of an estimate of your basal metabolism, which in theory, what that means is how many calories would it take to keep you at that weight, whatever that number was at the top that you stepped on the scale for. That's kind of that basal metabolism. Now, when the computer in the machine actually does that calculation, though, the assumption is that your metabolism is average. And that's where it tends to fall apart. Most, most of our surgery patients, especially most of the patient population that we see, and metabolism is not average and so it tends to be much lower than average so subsequently then that whole section down at the bottom tends to be a huge overestimation of what someone could potentially eat and you'll often know gee if i you know is 
was doing nothing. In theory, you could eat this number of calories and you'd keep your weight stable. Okay? If you're doing light activity, you can eat this many more calories. If you're doing really heavy activity, boy, you can eat a heck of a lot more calories. Reality is, though, that isn't the patient population we see. So they actually utilize those numbers as a flawed thing. So I encourage people, for the people that are coming in to, uh, as our patient population, typically those numbers don't work well. All right, so how does that help you at all then? Okay, well, part of that is, is that it, the numbers from a math perspective can actually still be helpful. Because if you have an idea, because most people, even though I mentioned that many of our patients don't actually fall as that kind of the average metabolism, most people, even if they're running low, still fall relatively close to average. So kind of looking at then just in like this example, the resting energy expenditure was a little over 1700. Well, in order to get rid of a pound of fat, you've got to get rid of about 3,500 calories. So if you're trying to lose, say, a pound a week, well, that means you got to get rid of 3,500 calories in a week's period of time or about 500 calories a day. So then you could take, well, if the resting energy expenditure is about 1,700, we need to get rid of 500 calories a day. What if we just took in 500 calories less, which puts you in that 1,200 calorie range? And in theory, then at 1,200 calories, you'd be losing this individual that's on the example, would be losing about a pound a week. Okay. Now, again, oversimplification, and what we find with many of our patients is their metabolism really wasn't average. Therefore, if they're running lower than average, we've got to take that into account. And so just kind of subtracting that 500 calories a day, so if we're losing a pound a week, um, it's probably actually need to be lower than that. All right, so how does that help us here? Okay, so for this has been my experience over the last 25 plus years of doing weight loss surgery. For patients, for people that have had weight loss surgery, for a woman, once they're around 1,200 calories a day, they're usually starting to struggle again with their weight. For men, it's probably somewhere in that 15 or 1600 calories a day, which in theory, both of those numbers are much lower than you'd anticipate in someone who is, quote, normal, that if they were at 1200 calories a day, should be losing weight like crazy. Typically, a surgical population is not. And so subsequently, you have just some numbers to help keep in mind is that generally you're going to want it for women you're going to want to keep that calorie amount probably less than 1200 for men it's going to be in that 15 or 1600 range all right um all right now i did mention earlier that it's kind of it helps uh, the body composition can help us going kind to of figure out how much protein someone needs so how do i actually do that Basically, what I do, and I'm going to digress here off the numbers here for a minute. Um, I like kind of back here that most important numbers of looking at fat-free mass. So kind of what I typically do is look at that fat-free mass when I figure out how much protein does someone need. In a fat-free mass, I look at that number, and just in the example on this, there was kind of it was 140 pounds. Okay, So if lean fat-free mass was 140 pounds, how do I figure out how much protein that person needs. Okay, simplified way of doing it is going to take that 140 pounds, divide it by two, gives us 70 pounds. That was how much you would, how many, excuse me, how many grams of protein you'd likely need if you're not trying to lose weight. So if you're trying to just keep weight stable, you need about 70 grams of protein a day. So if you had 140, 140 pounds of lean body mass, you'd need about 70 grams of protein a day. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, you actually need to bump the number up. And the reason, again, is because when we are in a calorie deficit, which is what weight loss plan is, we're in a calorie deficit, you want to help preserve that lean body mass, which typically means you actually need to take in a little more protein than what you normally need. And it's usually about 1.3 times that. 
so I can't do the math perfectly, but 1.3, kind of 100, you know, 70 grams of protein, 1.3, whatever that is, that's going to put you around 90 or so. Okay, so we come up with that 90 grams of protein a day. Now, once your weight is stabilized and you're just kind of in weight maintenance, you don't need quite as much anymore because that, that once weight is stabilized, by definition, you're not in a calorie deficit. All right. So that does at least help us figure that out. So again, quick review, just kind of looking at the most important numbers are up top. And the first most important is your weight. Think pounds, not kilograms. Body fat, you want to look at percentage, probably more than anything. Okay, the lower that percentage, the better. And the lean body mass is kind of looking at kind of how many pounds of lean body mass. You want to keep that number as good as possible. This is the lean body mass, again, that is directly related to your overall metabolism. All right, so a few tips for success to kind of wind this all down. Keeping track of body composition is a very important part of our weight loss plan. So I encourage people, check your body composition routinely. Okay? Check your weight at home routinely. Lean body mass is the most important number kind of related to your overall metabolism. The trick of preserving lean body mass is make sure you do get your protein in, but also then exercise. And weight training is the best exercise for preserving lean body mass. That resting energy expenditure, kind of the poor man's estimate of overall kind of your basal metabolism, but again, tends to be inaccurate. Uh, so be careful with utilizing that. That's going to be somewhat of an overestimate overestimation. If you have questions, just give us a yell here at Center for Weight Loss Success. Again, email success at cfws.com. Phone number 757-873-1880. Looking for a jump start? We've got a number of those plans as well. All right, don't see any questions sitting out there. But if you think of things, don't uh, don't not ask. Again, pick up the phone, send an email, or you can even send a text. All right, little reminder: stop by, get your body comp done. Okay, as, as COVID all settles on down, hopefully we'll be opening up more. It'll be just it'll hopefully be easier for people like to walk in, get their body comp done. Check into the membership portal. I encourage us all the time. You should be receiving the weight loss tips as well as the weekly recipes. Tune in each Tuesday, 12.15 for the next webinar. Watch your email for the invite and link. And remember, it's your life. Make it a healthy one. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.